And the last thing we're going to do in our architectural project here is create uh, a, a little camera view and a 3D rendering of that. So let's say we want to have a nice, you know, for a cover sheet. We'll go back from our site plan or our main floor, it doesn't matter, I'm going to say camera. And I'm going to place a camera, you know, about right here, kind of looking at the building this way. Okay, I'm going to get a bit of a view in there. And then I'm going to stretch this out. Okay, so I want to position this about, you know, I want to see the whole building. Problem is the trees and that look good from, from the, um, the different angles, but we don't want to see them all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on this guy and say, hide the element, right? And in fact, I'm going to take all these little guys that are right in the way using my control button. And say hide element. Hide element. And maybe I'll, eh, we could leave a, maybe put a couple small ones in there. We do want some shrubs and stuff, right? So let's go back. What we're going to do here, I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to hit close hidden here. I'm going to um, open up my site plan like this. And I'm going to tile my view. I'm going to say view. I'm going to say tile the view. So I have my site plan over here. I have my 3D view over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick on this tree. And I can see that tree is right there. So I'm going to nudge it using my arrow key in my view. I can click on it and kind of move it around. Okay. Now what I'm, I'm going to do is while I'm in this 3D view, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to this camera and I'm going to right click and say show camera. You can see where the camera is right here. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to um, have a look at that and where I might want to place trees off to the side. Because what happens is you don't want trees right in front of you, but you definitely want to have a few um, on the side. So we can see there that's this tree. So I'm going to take that tree and say create similar. And I'm going to add those like right near the edges. Okay, those are what I'm going to do is we want to add those near kind of right by the corner of the building. Escape, escape. And then we can kind of stretch this, make it a little bit longer. Okay, we because we want to have some kind of trees in background. Okay, well, we probably want to bring this up. So we can use this view to, to move the trees around. Like if I grab this tree here and I start to nudge it, okay, you'll eventually start to see it come into play. Now I think that tree is turned off in my perspective view here. So I can close this guy off, maximize this, and now I can say, okay, you know, that's going to be kind of my cover sheet, uh, you know, view. And this guy, again, might be a little bit close. Let's move him over a little bit. Okay, we do want to have some vegetation there, but we don't want to completely hide the building. Okay, again, you could put some more shrubs and stuff down the front here. But I've got my 3D view, and I can turn my crop region off. Okay, so now that I have kind of positioned that, I want to go in and do my rendering. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom and click my teapot, and that brings up my rendering dialog box. I'm going to do a draft right off the bat. I'm going to render that and just say, show me the, the draft version of the rendering. So Revit's going to go through and it's going to render this view based on, you know, the materials that I've got in there so far. And there is the draft. So, I mean, that's just a very quick and easy uh, draft um, quality rendering. From there, I can tweak my lighting. I can go in here and I can adjust the image itself, which is really neat. You can take shadows and, and, and bring that up. You can lighten up the rendering. Um, you can play with the um, exposure, which is really powerful. You can't move this guy much at all. Really, the highlights um, and the exposure are the ones where you're really going to get the biggest effect. Okay. Um, shadows, darker, 
uh, saturation point, okay, different colors. So you can adjust warmer and cooler, etc. You can just hit reset. So that is under the um, adjust exposure. And really, you can do a lot with this. Um, again, this is just a draft rendering. So what we'd probably want to do is inevitably go best, which would take, you know, would take several hours to render. We can do a high quality rendering, which would, you know, might take not as long. And then we can maybe try doing a, a medium rendering. Sun is good. Sky background, a few clouds. And I could say um, at any point we can save, but I can also say regional. If I don't want to, because it takes so long to render, sometimes you say region, and then what you do is you click on here and you say, well, just show me this tiny little area. Just render this one little area. And then if you hit render, it'll only render the one area, which will give you a sampling of what you're going to get. So rent region is used to get little samples of high quality rendering. So it doesn't have to render the whole thing and take you all night to discover that, you know, it's not what you wanted. So in this case, I might say, well, I'm going to go with a medium rendering. Everything looks good. And I'm going to hit the render button here. So Revit starts to render and we'll come back when it's done. So there's our medium quality rendering, not too bad. And then you can try yourself by dialing it up to be uh, to being best and high and best. I'm not going to bother with that for us right now. Uh, but what we do want to do is go in here and play with our exposures again. Uh, darker, lighter, hit apply. Okay. This is the guy that's really going to give you the effect that you want. Highlights. Okay. Try sliding it way up and see what the difference is. Okay, so it's not making too much of a difference here. Uh, shadows. Darker. Okay. I don't need any. I think what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. And get get rid of the dark shadows there we go saturation i'm going to leave where it is exposure i think that's okay so now i'm going to say okay i don't want to lose all these settings in the rendering so what i want to do now is say save to project and it's good i can just call this rendering one so that's now been saved to my project, and I can close this off. So if I go now to here, under Renderings, there's my Rendering 1. So let's go to our cover sheet. And I don't know where we're going to place it. Da -da 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 -da. Well, I guess I can bump this guy over a little bit. Take this guy, move it up, and then I can just grab this rendering view right here and go whoop, and drag it in and place it. Okay, now maybe I will get rid of this guy just for the time being. I'm deleting it off the sheet. Doesn't mean I'm deleting it from the project. Now I can click on here, and this guy I need to double click. And I think I can just stretch that, believe it or not. I think I can just click on here. And what is creating the size of that? Aha, the, once the rendering is done, I need to adjust the size of the 3D view. Um, and that is, then I need to render. So the problem is I can't change the size of this here. I'm going to just delete it off of there. That's probably why that actually rendered fairly quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab that 3D view and place it on here. Okay. Now that the 3D view is on there, I can see what size I need it to be. So I'm going to say, okay, well, I want that to be, you know, uh, 400 millimeters wide. 
Okay, let's go even more. Let's go 600. And there we go. And eh, let's move it down a little bit. Move it over. And I'm also going to open up the view. And I don't need the, to have that much sky showing. So let's just kind of squish this down a little bit. Get rid of that. OK. Now I can go back to my sheet and see what size it is on the sheet. Okay, now that it looks like it's the size that I want, as far as the view goes, now I need to do the rendering. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my uh, 3D view here, my camera view, and back to my rendering. It's going to remember all my settings, and I'm going to hit my render button. And for the most part, that turned out uh, rendering very much the same. Um, I do want to do a save to project, and I'm going to call it rendering 2. The difference being this one is bigger size. So I'm going to close this off, uh, go back to my cover sheet, get rid of this view here, because I don't really need that. I want the rendered version. I'm going to delete that. 3D view and grab my render 2 and drag that in and it's going to be the correct size. I can't adjust the rendering after the fact. I have to adjust the 3D view before I render it. And then grab that, place it over there. So there's our project. Uh, 3D views, um, foundation plan, main floor, second floor, elevation, sections, details, and site plan. So um, I'm hoping you learned something on this nice little architectural project, and I wish you luck with uh, any other Revit endeavors.